Yo, what's happening? Welcome to TR Leads. I am Terrence Richmond. I put the TR in TR Leads. And I'm with some wonderful, wonderful ladies today. And uh, they from, uh, I'm going to just say they global. They don't even know they global, but they global. And uh, I have Sammy Joe, I have Vanelli, and I have Kim. And they are three sisters, powerhouses. Uh, they're multi-talented. Um, and they're fierce. And we're going to have a fun conversation. How are you guys doing today? Great. Excited. Excited. Look at them. They all smiling and all that. They glowing. Um, this is TR Leads where we empower, we activate, we equip. Our conversation is it can go sideways quick because if I see something that we need to go talk about, <laughs> rather good, rather sad, whatever, we're going to go with it. But we're going to have fun. But today what we're going to do is we're going to start off with this, this or that's. Thing. Now, look, you guys are family. You guys have been, you guys are overcomers. You guys uh, run a business together. Uh, everything from weddings to funerals to live events. Um, from my experience with you guys, you guys are like go getters. And so um, this is about to be fun, but we're going to start here. This or that. And it could be one at a time. It's, one, it's only one. It's not no, you can't choose nothing but one of the other all right so don't be <laughs> trying to uh mess around coffee or tea we'll start with you coffee tea tea chocolate or vanilla chocolate chocolate vanilla <laughs> <laughs> which is like it's just a long story anyway yes <laughs> pancit or lumpia Ooh. Ooh. lumpia okay. lumpia pancit ah uh, sound like dip set but hey man okay. <laughs> cookies or cake cookies Cake. Cake. Wow. What kind of cake? Uh, actually, tiramisu. <laughs> Red velvet. There. Red velvet! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is like, anyways. I know, I know. It's chocolate so... with a red diamond. <laughs> but it's, it's good. good. It's good. Weddings or birthday parties? Weddings. Oh. Birthdays. That's hard. That's a good question. That is. Like our own birthday? If it was our own birthday? Yeah, because we go all birthdays. birthdays. <laughs> yeah. um, I'll say weddings. I like I like weddings. Feel good. Summer or winter? Summer. Summer. Summer, <laughs> Summer all day. You don't have to answer first because it's the, the competitiveness in there. So <laughs> Absolutely. Summer. Vacation or vacation. staycation? <laughs> and what about you? Um, Vacation. <laughs> Sure. Right, you're just taking. You're, you, by the way, you're the oldest. Yes. Yes. So I say 38, 35, and no, 38, 35, 30. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Okay. 30 crew. Wow. Look at that. The Trinity. Okay. Mm -hmm. One ply or two ply? Oh. <laughs> no ply. <Double. laughs> yes. That is if the you answer. Know, you know. Yeah, if you don't. Yes. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess two ply. <laughs> two ply. Two ply, okay. the towel. Yeah. yeah, somebody said three ply yesterday, and I was like, man, that's just a little too soft. <laughs> that is too soft. That's boogie. Yeah, and one ply, that's like zigzag. That's like in it, the schools, and then it's like, what? Yeah, <laughs> it rips every, yeah. every, every row. Yeah. All right, so you guys, um, the, the beautiful thing about what you guys do, um, and there's some politics involved, there's... Uh, you engaged in the community. Um, you're engaged in very important moments in people's lives. Um, so you're serving your community, even in areas where you're getting paid, you're still serving the community. Um, how important is it for you guys to um, bring your clients along the creative process, right? I, I don't get that you are the people that just tell people what they party going to be. Um, how important is it to bring people along in the creative process with you? Creative process for planning? For planning, yeah. <clears throat> okay. It's super important, but what we didn't, it kind of came naturally because when we had clients and being in Vancouver, we're such a melting pot of culture, tradition and stuff. So when we started, us being global, as you mm -hmm. said, we're just so exposed to all the different types of cultures and, mm -hmm. and values. And we know that we respect our own roots and our upbringings and stuff like that, that we wanted to make sure that all the couples who approached us knew that we respected their cultures mm -hmm. as well. And the really cool thing learning is that we 
know so many different like Chinese, Vietnamese, Persian, Sikh, like all these different traditions mm -hmm. and them seeing us that we're Filipino, Canadian, but we yeah. know it, it's yeah. like they light up. Yeah. So it's super important. Yeah, super important. Now, now before we go further, <laughs> what's the name of you guys' collaborative company? What's the name of you guys' company? We are Power of Three with three E's. <laughs> Just, power of three. Yes, so yes. you gotta drag it on. We have to drag it on, and we have to add that. Yeah, because the handle, sometimes. the handle was taken already. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, but the, the number three was really important to us, and then we wanted the three E's to define us individually. Mm -hmm. So the the personal one is for myself is empower others. Mm -hmm. So that's like the political stuff and mm -hmm. community and building, yeah. building and yeah. roots and all that good stuff. Nice. And she's express yourself because. If I can, if I can express yeah, myself, yeah. yes, you may. Sure. you may. So these two are very like more of the organizers, very you know detailed oriented. I'm more of like the visionary, where like the creative part. And I I like that part. I enjoy yeah. that part. So yeah. with in where we work and our strengths, we all have different strengths, but. I, like we get to choose what we want to do because I mean it's our com it's our own company yeah. right yeah so with the express yourself I've always been very like passionate about like whether it's arts or whether it's um, you know just watching people live in their own passion and yeah. really be excited about that and so when it comes to event it's always been a little bit of that but <laughs> also just like you know whether it's the graphics part or like the logo mm -hmm. or what we all like look like or just like the visual part to it so mm -hmm. and then i'm like that dreamer where i'm like yeah let's do this and this and keep going they're <laughs> yeah. like okay just chill but i'm like okay no let's do more <laughs> so definitely expressing ourselves um i like to just add that uh, to the <laughs> icing on the absolutely on the cookie. and for you your e i my e is experience everything experience so, everything mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so as like the youngest i just wanted to experience everything i wanted to live mm -hmm. i just wanted to jump out of planes and i just wanted to do all that stuff i don't know where that came from I really know. no <laughs> <laughs> uh you know issues <laughs> daddy <laughs> issues yeah. probably uh, yeah so that's my so that's like our personal side and then yeah. for ease for business it was events entertainment exposure because we just were so involved in everything that yeah. should have really been the yeah, everything. we're still everything is like progress, but we really just like whatever people you know are a part of or what we like and enjoy. We truly just want to help people grow, mm -hmm. and we always represent things that we like. We never will promote anything that we don't like, <laughs> yeah. and so yeah. that's why where we can be like more authentic and just be real. And we're gonna you know help. We like to uplift other small businesses mm -hmm. and um, other entrepreneurs in that sense, and like to inspire women especially mm -hmm. uh, to just just do it. Like people are always thinking of something or like having a dream, and they're just so scared of a lot of things. So we try to yeah. set an example where. Um, <clears throat> we can do it so if we are normal people and can pave that way then then you can do it because we're just normal we're just yeah. real people here yeah. so have you guys ever started a process for an event and because of it wasn't something you guys were feeling or agree <laughs> with you guys bagged out what Sorry, I was just thinking about that one birthday. Oh my gosh <laughs> I buried that deep down into my soul so you can tell we, me about that. actually <laughs> I don't know if I don't want to say the name. Yeah. We had a birthday event. We were we were actually busy, and we wanted to help. Like we, this is a problem with us. I think we just don't like to say no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we always believe that like you know God sent us this person or whatever to for help, and you know if we can, let's do it. So we took it on, and uh, you know there's just some things that were going through the event, and we we're just like whoa. We we thought we were helping, but it turned like it was just another perspective of like uh, maybe it wasn't good enough or all these things that kind of went wrong and we we're like oh we were almost like why are we here like we should leave but obviously we'd never do that because we were still trying to represent mm -hmm. but that was something that's been a little traumatizing let's kill but get, it was a learning experience it's okay. yeah. it was sammy joe's referral <laughs> so we <laughs> just to say that so we couldn't we didn't feel like we could say no it was for our birthday party a, a birthday party joe. A, a, I'll just, I won't say the oh, age, a, a kid birthday party, um, but the expectations I think weren't balanced where they were looking at our Instagram, which was primarily weddings and like the decor was like balling. And so Versus we, budget yeah, so the budget right. and stuff. So when we came down to it, we didn't say no, but at the end we were like, really that one really hurt. <laughs> yeah, we were like, we were about to, like, the moral of the story is. Yeah. 
is that um, you, you know we all we're always open to listening, yeah, and we always are jumping to help. But what we don't what we have learned is now to really step back and be like, what are the expectations? Like mm -hmm. an agreement of who is doing what and what project. And yeah. that goes for business with clients, but also collaborative efforts. Absolutely. Because there's mm -hmm. so many folks who want to do uh, a project together, but are not putting in the same effort. Yeah. So what I've learned from this process and other experiences is just to really like ground ourselves mm -hmm. to be like, what is everybody's capacity mm -hmm. and what um, is actually doable? Yeah. Because especially in the pandemic, when we're like a year in and life is supposed to go on, but yet we're still in a pandemic, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. it really is like, can you put this on your plate? Can yeah. you handle this physically, yeah. mentally? Yeah. So that experience was um, <clears throat> an experience. An experience. But, <laughs> yeah, that, if I can just add to that, what you said about have you ever done anything where you're like the creative process, like they had all creative process and we're like, okay, we're down and we made some suggestions. So what Power 3 does is like, we pretty much will like, um, execute your dream, your vision of yeah. what you want, right? Yeah. So it's all you, really, what you want to do. But we will recommend things that we think, in our experience, will not work, yeah. or is not maybe the best idea, mm -hmm. and this and that, and <laughs> this and that. But really, <laughs> it's it's uh, you know we just end up doing what they want because this yeah. is their party. Absolutely, right? so. and they're paying you, mm -hmm. and yeah. then you're. But if you're now engaged in something, you're like not feeling or yeah. agreeing. Mm -hmm. I can see how that. So so you guys are in the business of carrying other people's burdens. Yes. Pretty much. <laughs> problem solvers. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Problem solvers. Solution finders. Solution yeah. troubleshooting. Mm -hmm. speaking, <laughs> speaking of troubleshooting, mm -hmm. have you guys ever ran into a situation where you've tried to troubleshoot? Because troubleshooting is, is like, I think you don't just get paid for what you, what you can do. You also... You you get paid to troubleshoot, mm -hmm. right? Like you can't just have someone running sound, but then when sound goes bad, they don't know how to get you out of yes. it. And so, have you ever uh, ran into a situation where you were trying to troubleshoot and it shot back? It like it didn't work. Hmm. No, we're what, perfect. Wait, what? <laughs> Well, <laughs> I was like, people are gonna see that. Like, no, gonna say that. Well, of course, we now. I think I've definitely experienced, and I just thought when you were talking mm -hmm. about that, about the lights, like hanging up those lights, those heavy lights. <laughs> oh yeah, and yeah. just so the things did. that. Ha but that's the thing. We troubleshoot, but we always we get it done, and yeah. no one sees that part, yeah. right? The sweat, the tears, yeah. like the anxiety of it. But we just we just trust that there's always a, a solution. There's always an answer, and we're just gonna do whatever it takes. And I don't know. It just happens. Like yeah. we just. Finish the job. Yeah, whether it's, yeah, we don't give up on the first try. We mm -hmm. it would be like five or ten tries, but we'll do it. And that's the whole point is that on your wedding day or event day, we are putting out fires that you don't see. Yeah, and like people are paying for that, and to kind of put the value on that has been also a learning process too. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times in the consultations, I'm like, you kind of just have to trust me. Yeah, <laughs> and usually absolutely. it absolutely. kind of works. Yeah. yeah, and there is power in, in in the fact that there's three of us and you're never yeah, alone. I think absolutely. that's mm -hmm. the most important thing with anything that we do in life, in business, personal, and our spiritual walk. Right. Yeah, that yeah. is so. So, have you guys ever? Um, <laughs> have you guys ever gotten into a fight? <laughs> on the event at the event like backstage or with each other with each other all have it. you guys probably all the time well it's not like a fight it's more just like uh dude like why didn't you think of that and it's like, okay but we we know that when we're doing an event anything is not like personal yeah, yeah it's yeah. all out of love and it's all just like like whatever the client wants and we're trying to have the same goal yeah we've definitely snapped at each other mm -hmm. absolutely and stuff. We're like why did you set the, the centerpiece like that and it's like oh my god like <laughs> i'm so stupid, sorry right? yeah. and it's a time schedule and it depends on what our roles is because we're if we're, me and vanelli are behind the scenes or if it's an event that i'm the one that has to front the audience or the guest mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm on the mic yeah mm -hmm. and that's why it has to be constant communication yeah yeah, yeah. like and there's so many moving parts there's so many vendors you're communicating with and there's just human error if i like said like okay we're gonna start in five minutes someone might have heard me and told the dj hey we're starting now yeah and then like speeches you're like what wait what the dance like the couple's not even here like that yeah. stuff kind of happens yeah. but you just have to like roll with it and laugh right. at it and trust is a huge thing for us too and we've been so, we've been doing it so much we're like working together and being around each other because we we honestly genuinely love being around each other <laughs> it's almost like a blessing and a curse yeah but <laughs> at the same time we can read each other like vibes, minds, like I can look at Vanelli, Vanelli can look at me, I'm like, yeah, I got it. Like, yeah. you know, or she can do that with her, like all of us, right? Yeah. Especially when it comes for 
my part in it with the decor. It's like something fell or something spilled, something broke, whatever. I'm like, I got it. Just do you. Like, yeah. you do you. And there's a trust. And that's why it's hard for us, I think, to hire other people. Yeah. Because we're like, hmm. Yeah. Like, it's going to be actually more of a headache. Yeah. Or is it going to, should we just like pick it up and just do more work and stuff? So, so yeah, that's what that trust and, mm. and all comes in. So I see two things here, but I see, so I see partying and politics a, t- a tiny bit. <laughs> and whenever people hear politics, they hear like, uh, they they think of this bad side, not mm-hmm. the side where there's people actually really for the people. Mm-hmm. Um, where is, is is the politics side a part of, I know it's not a part of Power of Three per se, but is it a part of all you guys' heartbeat or is it something <laughs> that you um, really, so how, so where, if we're following the, mm-hmm. the, the Power of Three, where does that okay. just like, all right, guys, I got to go over here today. Yeah. Um, there's definitely, that is, they're all looking at me, so I'll talk about that. <laughs> um, I think everything that you do or we do, or I do, I should say, is political. Absolutely. There is a political statement in there, whether you mm-hmm. like it or not, yeah. or whether you don't want to talk about yeah. it or not. Yeah. And so being marginalized and being from um, the Philippines and seeing what's out there, and you just, well, for me, it was really about being the voice. And mm-hmm. I think that's where it all started with community engagement yeah. and community organizing, yeah. where it was, we saw, I saw things that were not happening mm-hmm. that the community needed. Mm-hmm. And so that's how we ended up doing um, lots of community events where we did the COVID care packages, we did the exchange, which is a clothing exchange for folks that don't need to spend money for mm-hmm. women. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I do sneak it in there a little bit, Absolutely. you know, like it's just, it's <clears throat> kind of subtle. Um, and what we do, and that's what I love about the power of three, because it's up to us and what mm-hmm. we do, and mm-hmm. it really is our legacy if we yeah. really think about it. Absolutely, right. It so, is. for me, it is about representation, yeah. but it's also about leading, like yeah. allowing the youth and people to yeah. see what they don't see, yeah. to encourage yeah. that. So yeah. it's really about being a voice too. So yes, yeah, Th- this is very important because everything that you guys do. Um, it's all about people. It's, mm-hmm. it's Serving, all about yeah. enriching people's lives. Um, and yes, I think that's a calling. When you make it your life, if it, it's clearly a calling. Whether it is under the umbrella, the bold umbrella of politics, or it's under the umbrella of events, you are still navigating and governing people's dreams and lives and they trust you. Where did the heart for that, because you mentioned legacy, right? When I find legacy minded people, they're either continuing a legacy or they're the interruption in the bloodline of changing the legacy because they're really it's a bad legacy. It's not a good legacy, right? And so what I see from you guys when I think of Philippines, when I think of marginalized, when I think of immigrants, uh, to come into another country and, and begin that legacy, what would you say is the motivation behind you guys' drive? And I don't want the, like, the... Yeah. the <laughs> what is the motivation behind you guys' <laughs> drive? Um, rather it's politics, rather it's partying, Rather, whatever it is, the power of three, I don't even think you guys have awakened to all that that means when I'm thinking spiritual and mm-hmm. number three, the power of the Trinity, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, the power of team, the triple cord can, is not easily broken. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, all of those things, um, when there's a call, there is a deep seated um, motivation and I'll just go out, go and set it. Maybe this is a place where we take a turn. But normally it's something that God allowed you to endure. And that will always be your fuel to never give up mm-hmm. on people. So you want to say yes to everybody mm-hmm. because you can always point back to this thing mm-hmm. that was painful, that was challenging, but it. It is your fuel, right? You can, if you drink gasoline, it's going to kill you. But you need it to get to everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's going to pay you, right? Mm -hmm. What's that deep-seated thing for you guys? What's... 
like what our why is, right? Yeah, what, what's, so, the, what's, the, what's underneath it all? Like, Yeah, I think each of us has honestly our own story, our own why, but when it comes down to it, like we're family rooted, right? And so <clears throat> at a young age, our mom became, am I crying? I didn't yeah. even like, <laughs> where did that come from? So our mom became a single mom when we were younger. And so we watched our mom like hustle, grind, like pick up anything she could yeah. just to put, you know, food on the table and like a roof over her head. And that's how she showed us how to love, right? Yeah. And so seeing that as a, you know, as a young woman, seeing someone working so hard, you're kind of like, oh, cool. Like she's a superhero. Like we're going to be just like our mom, right? Yeah. And don't get me wrong. I love you, dad. Um, like things turned like afterwards as we got uh, became adults and stuff but when we were watching that um, we wa it kind of became like a domino effect of like watching Sammy Joe do the same thing hustle and grind because we had to help with rent we had to pay for things that you know we didn't want to go up to our mom and ask like hey can we get this for school mm -hmm. can we like buy this and like the other kids and so I would like connect to my sister and be like I'll do whatever you need to do because like yeah. we're out here trying to retire our mom right we're so sick and tired of watching her being tired being sick or you know going to work because like you know we want our mom to be there right yeah. and then along comes Vanelli and um same thing she sees us always grinding so we're like we got to go to school we got to get the job right but when we get that job we realize that job's not enough because yeah. we got big dreams like yeah. God planted huge dreams on our heart you know and to help people do the same thing so we all went through our own journeys all very different but from that we just knew that okay that was good like thank you for that because now we can use that as fuel as you said and i always tell my mom like all the time till this day i'm like i'm gonna retire you like you just wait you know she always jokes about it and she's like well i hope i'm still alive to see that i'm like okay <laughs> chill like she sees she's like i already see like what god's been doing yeah. in your lives individually and as together but honestly like my mom like our mom we're so close with her and on, when she was a single mom and we lived in like small places like we became close and I Absolutely. think that had a big part of you know our relationship as we grew up and how we're so involved with uh, like um, empowering women mm -hmm. right and just like lifting them up or uh, you know wanting to just pour into people's life and look like I know how you feel because I was there right and each of our stories can relate to that because if we didn't go through that then we wouldn't have been able to look at someone and say look like I know how you feel because yeah. I, I did that yeah right yeah so I, I would say that and of course like there's Pablo now and like there's you know our family is like you know we're so solid as a family with our dad and our stepmom and, and just want to see uh, a change in our generation when it comes to like living your life to the fullest but also that financial mm -hmm. cur like curse that kind of in the Filipino culture, not all Filipinos, but we always live to just working, working a job, two or three jobs. And like, we all did that because we yeah. thought that was the way to make money, right? Yeah. But there's just so much out there and so much more in that we would deserve, like these people are so deserving, you know, going to the Philippines, moving to abroad countries to work and send money back home, but being separated. Yeah. And so the politics from that, coming from that and just seeing our families do that same thing, we're just thinking like, no, this is not, we got to teach people that there's more than just that. You like put families back together and, mm -hmm. and don't be in that status quo of like, oh, you know, you never see like Filipino women be successful. Absolutely. And it's like, no, we're going to change that. So Absolutely. we got to be the example of that. Right? Super important. What if, and so for you being the youngest, how does, how does that unfold for you when you come along a little later, <laughs> when you come along a little later in the, um, yeah. So being the youngest, I didn't have a lot of control or a lot of say in things like, oh, who gets the room, first room, oh, it's, it goes to her, then it goes to her, then if there's something left over, then <laughs> yeah, it goes to me. Absolutely. So like from growing up with that, I always wanted to have control of like my future and my life. And because I saw them working two to three jobs, it was, I thought everyone did that. And when I would talk to like my friends who had piano classes, swimming classes, I'm like, oh, don't you guys like have to work? <laughs> like, I was like so confused about that, but I like don't regret it. It definitely brought us closer um, for sure. And when you did say like, do we want to change the bad legacy? I don't want to say bad. Yeah. It's just like a different cultural norm. Absolutely. Like we don't want to do paycheck to paycheck thing. We want to make sure that our family ha doesn't have to experience that. But at the same time, uh, know the value because we don't absolutely. want to spoil them too, yeah, <laughs> right? Absolutely. Yeah. So just growing up, um, hearing from other family and oh, sorry, other friends that they're like, "Oh, I'm so like you guys are so close together. Like I'm not close to my siblings," and I thought that was normal too. No. So like as much as we've gone through some ish, like we've gone through some stuff. Yeah. Uh, we're totally blessed, and like our mom, I know like she had to leave 
um, Philippines and not finish her education she brings that up mm -hmm. and we're like no you've blessed us so much like she had Air, she worked for Air Canada and she had yeah. passes yeah. so she would fly us to the Philippines and us seeing that firsthand of what our family over there had to go through really mm -hmm. brought perspective into like materialistic stuff like yeah. we weren't um, super materialistic not that it's mm -hmm. like bad and stuff but yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's just it's a lot. It's a lot. But I also have built up a, a really strong wall. Too. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's just like the emotion. And because I deal with a lot of clients, like I'm very client facing with my couples and mm -hmm. stuff. And I'm also like a counselor to mm -hmm. them in some shape or form that I'm always the one that they can go to. So it kind of, uh, I have to like be that strong person yeah. to not break down, yeah. which then means when I have stuff to deal with our own, I have to learn how to switch it to be yeah. like, it's okay to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. yeah. But like, even there, like I wanted to cry. I thought I was gonna, but I was so like, oh crap, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm not crying. Yeah, you yeah. gotta be the strong way. So I'm yeah. gonna keep the toilet paper, I mean, keep the tissue. The <laughs> yeah. And for you being the oldest. I, I think that's where it's, it's where I've seen um, a lot and I, and I feel a lot too, and I know that we're all crying right now, right? So, and they bug me because I'm always about know your roots. Like, where did we come from? Why are we here? How did we get here? Yeah. And I think not enough people talk about it. Yeah. And it's because our elder, our parents don't want to talk yeah. about it. Like, yeah. I, I have conversations with a lot of friends who are like, I asked my parents how they got here. They don't want to tell me. Mm -hmm. Like, they say, forget about it. We're here now. Kind of yeah. erasing yeah. the history there yeah. but I'm kind of like you know being privileged as Vanelli said that we got to go to the Philippines back mm -hmm. and forth every year and we got to see our family and the struggle and the happiness but mm -hmm. we get we get to go back on an airplane and come back here yeah. Yeah. and so for me when you talk about the root of it is like I found it like an obligation um to 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 be their voice mm -hmm. like we have a we have that obligation to that we're Canadian and that we're able to speak and we don't have to be afraid of all these other things yeah. that they can't speak about. Yeah. Yeah. And so with that, it's like, you know, we're Filipino and we're Canadian, but we get challenged with we're not Canadian enough and yeah. we're not Filipino enough. Yeah. So where are we? Yeah. And w as a youth worker, um, it's kind of like they're going through that same thing and then there's stigmas of mental health and religion and politics and everybody is lost and mm -hmm. for me I didn't have that growing up mm -hmm. and so it's kind of like if I'm 38 years old and I still don't really have that yeah. can you how is the next generation gonna do that yeah you know what I mean yeah. so there is that sense of breaking the generation or curse but at the same time like leaving that legacy to look back on what we do mm -hmm. to be like oh they did try to do that because what we lack in uh, in our marginalized communities is documentation yeah it's yeah. not documented enough so whose history are we say talking about yeah, yeah. you know what i mean Absolutely. so i think there's there's power in that and i think there's power in gathering and celebration and that's why yeah. you know weddings and birthdays it depends like it's all about just celebrating life yeah. so yeah. I think that's what you know power of three is all about people want to be around us because yeah. we're contagious because yeah. we're uplifting <laughs> contagious in absolutely. a good way absolutely. just smiling contagious <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. laughs> <Absolutely. term. laughs> dangerous term to say right now <laughs> how, how has how, for, for you how has that this same thing we're talking about how does how has that impacted your parenting Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I'll wait on that. Yeah. Um, well, as Kim mentioned, I, I'm in the same boat. Mm -hmm. I'm a single mom from mm -hmm. the beginning. And so I've obviously been triggered by the things that I've seen. And, you know, nobody wants to be a single mom or expects yeah. it. Yeah. And because being raised as a Catholic in a Catholic upbringing, mm -hmm. but not really practicing, I am now starting my own family legacy of like, this is how I want my household to be and this is what we're gonna be learning together. And starting with the foundation, like giving my family a mission statement, a value, our core values, because yeah. along our way we did um, do some soul searching, we've done some personal development mm -hmm. and we got that for ourselves. Yeah. So it's really like, okay, this worked for me as an adult, so now I'm gonna pass this on to my son like and sometimes he surprises me where I'm praying every night and then all of a sudden he'll recite the Our Father and I'm like whoa how did you memorize that right it's like so cute yeah. um, so it you know obviously I do like he is my why and yeah. he is the, the reason why I do things yeah. and I think that's what gets me so anxious yeah. because you're so worried about 
well, if I do this, this will impact him. And then, you know, how is he going to feel? Mm -hmm. Because I talked to a lot of other parents too, and coming from a divorced family, a broken home, mm -hmm. it's like, well, how did I turn out? You know what I mean? Like people, mm -hmm. I think that was a lot of things with, with our mom saying like, oh, you need a man to, to um, raise the girls because they're going to go crazy and wild. And, and to be honest, that was like on our head. Mm -hmm. You know, we wanted to make our mom proud and not give her a bad name to prove people wrong. Mm -hmm. That just because she was a single mom doesn't mean that she's not going to be able to write good girls kind of yeah, thing, right? Absolutely. So, so, So here's one thing um, is... Mm -hmm. What is one thing from each one of you, one thing that as you are like, man, bent on breaking these cycles, one thing that you caught yourself doing that was a part of the cycle that you were like, ah, come on, I can't do that. Or we'll end up right where mom did or we'll end up right where auntie did or we'll end up right like one thing that you whether it was character whether it's a choice whether it's behavior where you realize one day man this is a part of that and if i'm going to break these cycles i have to change this about me mm -hmm. right it could be attitude it don't even have to be specific it could be an attitude it could be a situation that happened it could be in your relationship where you talk to one of your one of you, you talk to your your husband a certain way you like nah i can't do that i didn't say you changed yet i'm just saying you like this is what i saw mm -hmm. or this is maybe why mom and dad wasn't together i have to stop this whether it's pride whether it's fear whether it's ego whether it's poverty mentality um um, whatever it may be, just one maybe thing, whether you're still dealing with it or it's something that you like, I got that out of my life. You have a lot. Uh, you should go. <laughs> 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 okay. Actually, you want to go? I actually got to think of it. No, go, go ahead. ahead. Well, I guess when I, well, I'll, I'll go first. You guys talk about it. But I think for me, it just gets me so like, feel, I feel a certain way when I see people just settle. Mm -hmm. Like just being complacency, like, okay, it didn't work out. Like, I guess this is what I have to do now or whatever. And sometimes there'll be times in business, right, where it gets rough, like it's not perfect. And you feel like, oh man, like, did I make the right des like decision? Or like, should I just stop this now? Or you start, like the doubts start pouring in. You're just like, wait, 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 no. Like, I am not going to do that. And that's why like mindset is so huge. Like personal development, spiritual development, everything. And just not giving up because we always tend to do that. Like, you know, I know so many people that had a dream before and then now because they think that's not possible, that it's just like, they just settle. Like, I'll just do this and I'm comfortable here. It's safe. I'll just stay and just do a do and like let life just pass by mm -hmm. kind of thing. But it's like, life is such a gift. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like not something to be, people are in the hospitals right now, like fighting for their life, yeah. fighting for yeah. like one more chance. And you got people walking around like, you know, with other things going on in their head thinking that, Maybe that's the victim mentality or maybe it's like, you know, this is not good enough or whatever it is. But like just to be grateful in like what we have now and not to complain about those things. So yeah. there are some people out there that are complaining and thinking like, OK, yeah, no, I'm just I'm good. Like that's not for me. Yeah. That's not the life for me. But I just truly believe that we just need to surround ourselves with like really strong people, strong mindset, people that are doing things that you want to do or get into that same circle of people so that you can continue because it's so hard to. Um, you know, give up on a group or a small group, or like the three of us, right? Like, there's so many times where Vidalia, I'm sure she's just like, oh my God, this is too hard. But because we have three of us, there's no way that she can give up on us, right? Yeah. So just surrounding yourself with people, like-minded people, um, but also just like never giving up on that and not settling. Like just yeah. be dissatisfied and yeah. just keep going. Cause so you've caught the, you've caught the, 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 the answer to that is, so and correct me if I'm wrong, doubt creeping in. And you've seen how doubt has hindered progress in your people's lives and, yeah. and that. What about for either one of you? Go. Okay. We'll keep going. Uh, <laughs> well, because I was thinking, I guess, because I, everything I saw, I know I didn't want, so I did the opposite. And that's actually my motivator to not do what we were, up, we were raised mm -hmm. as. But I think maybe just... My with my, I'm scared because she's gonna watch this. I just don't know what to say. <laughs> but like, um, no, like you my mom, yeah. my mom wouldn't ask for help a lot, and I can mm -hmm. see that yeah. coming from me. That's like good. because it's like 
Right. You, no one wants to be, like people who help everyone don't ever want to be a burden yeah. on anyone. Yeah. And it's like a catch twenty two. Like you don't want to. So especially with knowing what we everyone has like their own thing. It's like oh I have my own thing, but oh I'll just figure it out. Yeah. And especially because I help other people, I'm like okay yeah. I'll figure your stuff out. I'll just put my stuff just over there. <laughs> yeah. So Absolutely. like I can see that something that I catch myself mm-hmm. doing. I'm like I need to know it's okay. I need to know like you know mental health. Like we can mm-hmm. talk about it. It is a thing because she was saying like it's totally a stigma yeah. that it's like what is mental health? Like you yeah. just mm-hmm. grind through it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Not as good. And and you need you need those you need those people that you can talk to. That's mm-hmm. why you know whatever church you guys go to, you guys need to <laughs> lean on your pastor a little bit more. Amen. Like he's mm-hmm. there to help you out. What about you? <laughs> Uh, as Vanelli mentioned, I have lots. <laughs> just one, but, just, just one. one. I was gonna say top one. three real quick. But <laughs> <laughs> too much. No, I know it's too much, but um, it's always it always comes back to health. Yeah. Like health is wealth, yeah. and you know, you know, I lost, we lost a cousin, and um, to cancer at a really young age, and mm-hmm. so I always go back to that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So in health in every aspect. So sometimes when I'm burning out or I know that I'm like, okay, tired, like, yeah. like yeah. reset yeah. and just think of that. Yeah. That's, that's root. That's the roots right there. You see that culturally, how the enemy tries in like food is such a huge part of culture, mm-hmm. right? And, um, and access, access and, you know, for some cultures, uh, healthy diets and healthy grocery stores and healthy options mm-hmm. We get it last. Mm-hmm. Like we gotta go discover it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Whole Foods is not in the hoods. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's like, and it's far to get to. So mm-hmm. it's not only not in your community. It takes an hour to get to the nearest healthy store, mm-hmm. right? And so when you're speaking of health, it's super important. That impacts your mental health, your spiritual health. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people's issues, if they just had some health. They can deal with church. They could deal with God. But right now, they're just trying to find a meal. Um, they're moody. They're cranky. Um, moving on. So give me one of your favorite childhood memories. Oh. One. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's like, it's one. So many. Whoa. Yeah, there are so many. There's too many. One. Nope. Too many. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I'll share one. Okay, it's kind of not just one, but <laughs> but it's gonna be one. But it, it, it'll come in full circle. Yeah. Or, um, without crying, right? So my grandfather, who we named Pablo after, yeah. or I named Pablo. Yes. After. <laughs> well, okay. trust me, I had like other names on my list Absolutely. that were like far from not even realizing, like you know, Jermaine, Ramon, like all those yeah. like you know names. But anyways. <laughs> My grandfather, my mom's um, dad, played a big role in our lives. Yeah. And um, he raised us and he was with us and that was part of our cultural yeah. connection. Yeah. And I think that's why I'm like so advocating with language and just, you know, I, I talk to a lot of folks who want to speak Tagalog or learn it because they want to connect with their grandparents. Yeah. Yeah. And so we were, we were lucky to really be close to our grandfather. Mm-hmm. And so that's, one of my cherished childhood memories, I should say. So good, so good. Well, okay, well, I, I'll piggyback on that because that's totally true. And it's, I do have core memories of like our grandpa just taking care of us, but as well as our aunts um, and, and just a lot of people, it's like a village, right? Mm-hmm. And so just having that community itself where I can think of, you know, if we fell asleep on the couch, my grandpa's putting pillows mm-hmm. on, on the couch so we don't fall over and yeah. hurt ourselves. Yeah. or like, um, you know, making us lunch because like the school was across the street and we would go over and they're making like chicken noodle soup, instant noodle soup yeah. or, um, you know, just teaching us all these things about uh, just living, like cooking yeah. hot dogs, whatever, like as simple as it was, yeah. was or just looking at my aunt and she was teaching me how to fold clothes. Just yeah. those survival skills really like, you know, as little as they were, it was just something to mm-hmm. look forward to where you just learn and you just learn to be like an adult like they are because they're showing so much love. And it was always rooted in love, even though they didn't talk that much or, you know, they always, we always knew that we felt loved and that um, they were always there for us. So mm-hmm. I think the family part of that really made a big role in, in our lives. Mm-hmm. And you? <clears throat> I think it, it has to do with our, our grandparents as well. Like going back to the Philippines, every time we went back to the Philippines and just 
we would get picked up in this jeepney and then we would roll into Palumupa and just like seeing our family wait for us was just something I always remember and I always like look forward to so Philippines is like a really really big part of our lives and mm -hmm. just hearing other people being like I haven't been back in 15 20 years I was like very like a, like surprised and really grateful that our mom gave us that opportunity um, and just like seeing our Lola she would sit in this like I don't know that in English. Yeah. And hot. just like, hot. and every time you go into the house, like you can't go see anyone else. You have to go to her first. Mm -hmm. Like even just random people who'd go in, we always, I always remember seeing them go say hi to her, bless her um, before speaking to anyone else. And, and bless just, is this. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, like, oh, sorry. Just showing a sign of respect. Yeah. So just like respect and just, yeah, respect was huge and family rooted was yeah. a big thing, which is oh, why we're so close culture is yeah. so, so good I got uh, one one last question before I have another last question <laughs> um, and I want I, I, this question specifically not just because of time but really because I don't want you to think too hard about it I want you to just say it what is one thing that has broken you that built you one <laughs> It's just, just one thing. And again, if you describe it in a general thing, great. If it's an incident, great. But you can look at it and be like, yeah, that, that, that broke me. I didn't think I could make it. But man, I could see how it developed me. Mm. Like, I can answer yeah. that. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I, can go first. Uh, I was, to sum it up, abandonment. Yeah. For sure. But that comes with forgiveness, too. Absolutely. absolutely. So I think before I walked to, it was the abandonment and not knowing how to handle that. Mm -hmm. But really getting closer to God and just the closeness of us is really about the forgiveness. Yeah. Because, yeah. again, too, as much as we, you know, we talk about our mom being single, mm -hmm. um, you know, there was that journey with our dad, yeah. right, that we didn't see for 10 years. Yeah. And that's a story on its own, but absolutely. yet we are, like, the closest right now. Yeah. And people who know us are amazed, and yeah. they ask us why, and we tell them why. So yeah. it gives them a little bit of that hope. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that's what I yeah. feel. Um, I want to say like my past relationships, uh, failed relationships that really broke me. Cause I think in my head I was like, I want to have a relationship that's successful. Right. Cause I didn't see that a lot. Yeah. And so I, I tried so hard to avoid that, that I was actually looking for like the wrong things. Right. Yeah. Cause not having a dad figure there, I was looking for love from, you know, males yeah. and a different way. And it was just kind of went into this like vicious circle of like yeah. always finding the same type of guy yeah. and really broke me because I just felt like what is this like why I, I thought this was going to be better and better and um, with all the things that came with that it really like just brought me to probably my lowest mm -hmm. and I realized from that what I don't want and what um, I did want right and kind of that whole learning process <clears throat> of um just just looking at myself more instead of into like looking for happiness in uh males yeah. or in relationships and so it led me to my relationship now mm -hmm. with my husband hey babe um <laughs> which obviously is not perfect but Absolutely. we have such a di different relationship than i've ever had before yeah. and it's grew us to a point where it's like there's so much communication and and, and thank God that he's been able to surround himself with, yeah. you know, leadership and men yeah. at Love Quest. And um, it's been it's been amazing. Right. So just to be there in such a, a spot of like I, hopeless, really, mm. um, and to be where we are now or I am as a woman, as a wife, it's definitely has played a huge role. Mm -hmm. And what about for you? Uh, I'm strong. Nothing breaks me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, I think <clears throat> the one thing that really broke me, which I don't really say out loud, but I'm trying to like learn to say it out loud to yeah. be like, this is my testimony, yeah. Yeah. Um, is when my husband's mom uh, blacklisted me from the Philippines mm -hmm. and I still can't go to the Philippines. Yeah. Um, but my unwavering faith yeah. has got me through there. And yeah. uh yeah, no, it's, it's that. It's like a lot of people don't know that mm -hmm. because it's like 
obviously really crappy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but at the same time, it's brought my str- uh, my faith with God really strong and with mm-hmm. us too in our relationship. Mm-hmm. And it's just like really ironic because with weddings and stuff and I plan these amazing weddings with like the mom and son dance like I it actually breaks me all the time a little bit um but with that it also builds me up really strong yeah yeah this is really good what it it seems to like the thing you've you've never escaped the um for, for example abandonment rejection um but life continues to throw those things at you you know Mm -hmm. stepmom and in your relationship with your um so not only dad but then certain men um for you you know being a single mom right the theme is constantly thrown at you right you you're gonna continuously out of your throughout your life deal with rejection deal with abandonment deal with and you have an opportunity right before abandonment crushed you but it presented you an opportunity to grow and you take that into your profession you actually i guarantee you guys i don't want to say fear but you never want to let someone down you never want to abandon them. You never want to not execute their vision. You mm-hmm. never want to not give them the best. You never, and, and all those things, again, are fuel. You you guys have, whether you, it's con- conscious or not, you guys are leading from a place that is fueled. Like, I don't sense from you guys that you're leading out of the fear of going back. Like, some people... They work for wealth and they're like, I'm never going back to poverty. Mm. But they're also never at rest with wealth. Mm. They're just like gone. And I see you guys leading from a place, you're getting healthier. Um, I can still see where those places are tender in your heart. Um, And you're in a safe place now in your life where you can deal with some of those things. Um, The the question that I have for you, I think it's still, it's work related, but I think it's still life related. Um, the question is what distinguishes power of three from other people in your field? I already have the answer, I have to. but <clears throat> what distinguishes you guys? Oh, well, for me personally, which I could, I would say for all of us is our faith in God. Um, we were we're still like learning of what that means and how do we talk about it in business because like in our website we did put like the trinity three that means something to us uh but i know when a lot of people come to me or when we did other interviews and they say like how do you do it how do you like deal with all these couples because that's a lot of baggage on what they're dealing with for their perfect day and a lot of them have their own drama and they they release it onto me and stuff but they're like how do you do it i'm like faith i don't know how but like I don't need to know how or when, but it's just going to happen. And we might have to look at our perspectives and we might have to pivot Mm -hmm. (laughs) pivot here and there. Um, But really, uh, for other wedding planners and stuff, I know personally for us, it's faith, our faith in God that really let us keep doing what we're doing in a pandemic um, and keep, we're we're doing still good. Like we still are having, uh, what's that called? Um, What's that called? Oh my gosh, I can't. Prospering. You're yeah, still, like we're, we're still having still clients increasing. coming to us that they want to yeah. still book with us. Yeah. So that is, is just showing kind of how we've been dealing with uh, weddings and events during the pandemic. Yeah. Is kind of what yeah. we're... Like we definitely want to make sure that people know that, you know, as a company, as a family, as our legacy, we honor God yeah. first. Mm-hmm. And we do serve with biblical principles, yeah. which means like serving people, positively yeah. impacting people yeah. in the community or within yeah. our events, but making sure that we're a representation of that as yeah. well. Because we might, and I just heard this from a, a Zoom call, um, a really lovely lady, she's an inspirational speaker. She said, we might be the only like we're Bible with skin, right? Yeah. We might be the yeah. only Bible that people ever interact with. Yeah. So everything we do from scratch all the way to the finish <laughs> is like we're representing God, yeah. right? And whatever that looks on the field, behind the scenes or whatnot, 
like we need to do that right yeah. as disciples yeah. to share the gospel to share the word yeah right so super important yeah. super important I, I i would say power three man that's such a powerful name it doesn't box you guys in either um it doesn't box you into events it doesn't box you into um weddings and uh what advice can you give people when it comes to the importance of forgiveness because i think your ability to i think i believe your ability to forgive is a huge part of giving you the capacity to deal with people on their big day mm -hmm. and then on the spiritual side i believe your ability to forgive is why god has and will forever prosper your business so how can you speak into the importance of forgiveness for health and wealth? Mm. Yeah, you know, it's because of the pandemic too, um, there's a lot of reflection that we all have been going through. And I know the question is geared to weddings and the big day, mm -hmm. but we have had a shift of focusing on funerals. Absolutely. And those are big days as well. Absolutely. And and you know we didn't mean to do it but we were there and we yeah. were doing it for family and friends yeah. first but yeah. now it's been something that that is blessed upon us and I yeah. think with forgiveness it really is forgiving ourselves mm -hmm. first and foremost mm -hmm. whether it is your wedding and you're like I should have did this I should have done that or even the person that passed away mm -hmm. it's like there's so much grief in there and people process differently I think what, what our strengths is like being there for people in their worst times, but also their most happiest Absolutely. times. Absolutely. So forgiveness is a practice and it's something that should be done daily. But the first person you should forgive yourself every day is yourself. Yeah. 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 So, so. good. What about for you? Yeah, that's a good one. I was like, like that. oh, wow, that was like really deep. It hit me. Uh, no, yeah, because it's so true. <laughs> we see, we see so, I think because we've been exposed to so many events, like so many weddings that we see the love and we see like the speeches where it's like they talk about things and we just see everyone crying and they want to celebrate. And then we do, we don't talk about it normally at funerals because it has such a like a negative thing. Like, oh, we have a funeral. It's like so down. But we've been also exposed to like l celebrations of life where we've seen people do it more positively. And it's just like, such a celebration yeah. that we know when it comes to forgiveness it's like you don't want to regret anything it's just like life's too short and as mm -hmm. as like you know yolo <laughs> as cheesy as that is <laughs> it's so true we and we live like that and specifically i live like that that's why i'm yeah. like very like experience everything and stuff because you just never know and i just don't want to you know knock on wood pass away tomorrow and yeah and have anything unsaid so if like, i want to go knowing that you know i forgave you i forgave myself like i forgive my husband's um yeah. mom and yeah. i will tell her that to my her yeah. face like every yeah. day everyone's like how could you do? like get they get so mad and in their feelings and i'm like i forgive her because if i don't that's that's just toxic for me absolutely absolutely yeah, yeah. well for me it's it's like baggage right if you want to if you have a goal and you want to get somewhere whether it is with health or wealth um, you're carrying something that's like negative in your heart, in your soul, in your mind daily, and you don't even know what's hanging around there, and it becomes heavy in your heart. And if you're out there trying to pour into people's lives and trying to be rooted in love, and you're not just like forgiving that one piece of it, that's gonna show up into everything you do, whether it's your relationship or your new relationship or your business partners or whatever, because something will trigger that yeah. again because you didn't let it go, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just like in Frozen, you gotta let it. Go. Let it go. Absolutely. And so shout when out, you do that, JT. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's just, it's like a whole thing, like to just l like be lifted off of you, like get rid of that baggage because yeah. it won't serve you anything, yeah. anything at all. Right. It's just going to drag you down and pull you back from where you're destined to be, where God has planned for you. So I feel like for forgiveness, it might not be easy, like an overnight thing, or it might take a while, but when you think of it, you're like, why? Why do you have to build up that anger? Why do you have to build up that negative space? And, and what can you do now? Like, you yeah. can't do anything about it, right? Absolutely. So no regrets for sure, right? Yeah, and you don't want to leave this this earth being like, oh, um, you know, I had so many, so much beef with all these people and my family never talked to them, whatever it is, right? And you're not whole, yeah, right? So you really got to act like this is your last day, right? Yeah. What can you leave? What legacy? Are people going to like remember you as like someone that complained and had a lot of beef yeah. with people and just, you know, darkness? Or do you want to be the light? Yeah. You want to shine through that darkness, when, especially during this time when all these mm -hmm. things are happening. So it, I think it's like a huge part where people can look at and be like, wow, if she forgive, you know, him for doing that, 
or her for doing that to her, like then there's hope. Absolutely. Right. And I just Absolutely. think that's like a that's something that needs to be contagious to people, and, yeah. and people need to catch that. Yeah. Wow. It's been great. We're gonna end on this, and you guys are gonna have 20 seconds to answer this question <laughs> each. All right. The power of three. I need you to leave. You're gonna look into that camera right there. And you're going to leave people with a tip in three areas. Don't you okay. Yes. Um, business. I just had it. Business, personal, and spiritual. And I'm going to differentiate the three. I know I'm missing something. But business is a spirit. No, there you go. Business tip, leadership tip, and personal tip. Oh, that's... Okay. One tip, 20 <sighs> seconds to answer. It's not a description. It's just like business is something that's just like you've learned. If someone's going to run a successful business, this is one thing that you need to remember. Number two, if they're going to be a successful leader, this is one thing they need to remember. And if they're going to have health as a person... This is one thing you need to remember. 20 seconds. I'll go first before someone oh, says yes. mine. <laughs> okay, go, go, go. okay, business. You might have to remind me as I go. But business. for Okay, listen up. For business, my tip for you is to be committed. So whatever is your goal, your business, small or big, you just need to make a decision to fully commit and just do the darn thing. Okay, there's no giving up and there's no doubts. You just got to do it. Leader. As a leader, you need to be consistent. So we're not going up and down and maybe this or that or being all wash wishy washy. Like you gotta be consistent. So wake up in the morning, don't waste time on social media, do productive things consistently and that's every day. If your business is not open, you know, let's say six days because Sundays, you know, we gotta Chick-fil-A that. So we gotta work really hard, but make sure you're consistent on those days that your business is open because no one's gonna come to you if you're closed. If your mouth is closed, if you aren't doing anything, and you know, being that leader and representing what you believe in. Personal. Personal health or personal, just personal. personal. Okay, love yourself. Sometimes we get a little too hard, and we're always on the grind. Like, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Or like, I didn't do that call, and I should have, woulda, coulda, shoulda, da. Don't do that. Love yourself first, and really just take everything that you maybe have messed up on, and just. Learn from it and take it and then don't do it again and try not to. And then just love on yourself and love on everybody else around you. That was six, that was 20 seconds each one. Okay. Oh, 20 it seconds right? all together. <gasps> now just put it. Oh, it's, okay. Okay. it's all good. Let's do it. Okay. Business. Business. <laughs> Contact power. No. Um, business, there's never enough to learn. You can constantly learn all the time. Yeah. Yes. Next. Leadership. <laughs> Leadership. Pressure makes diamonds. Uh, there's no, uh, there's no point of wasting time on things you can't change. So if you're an under pressure, like pivot, pivot, pivot until you get the answer. Next. Nice. Personal. Uh, come to my church. It's called Love Quest. Yes. Um, honestly, it's changed my life. It's changed all our lives. And uh, honestly, come. Sundays at 5 o'clock and 7.30. <laughs> 7.30. Joe, <laughs> business. Relationships. It's all about building relationships, uh, networking, and getting to know people. I think those are important for business. Nice. Leadership. Same thing. Relationship. Building those relationships, keeping in contact with your mentorship, all of that. Personal. Relationship. I knew I was like, is it real? Yeah. It's yeah. all yeah. about the relationship that you have with people, especially your family, the closest people to you, um, and God, your relationship and walk with God. Nice. Amen. Commitment, consistency, love, mm -hmm. relationships. Wow. Come to Love Quest. <laughs> wow. You you guys, you guys, this is amazing. We for sure are gonna have another segment because I wanna talk about uh, I wanna talk about parenting and marriage. And uh, so we will be back. <laughs> um, but man, thank you guys so much for tuning in to TR Leads. One more again. This is the power of three. So if you need your events done, if you need uh, uh, moments done like funerals, weddings. Um, these mighty women um, will not only help you, but they will uh, 
create an experience for you that your children's children will be able to talk about. And so this is a power three. Go follow them on Instagram and all that cool stuff. We are TR Leads, where we equip, activate, and empower. You know what it is. Till next time, get your love, love fix, fix, man. <laughs>